Hello. Today I want to discuss a very interesting paper. is a is a meta analysis published in Lancet uh, on the effects of uh, pharmacological blood pressure lowering uh, for the primary secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease. This paper has been authored by the blood pressure lowering treatment trialists collaboration that published you know this classical paper in 2001 again in the lancet showing that there is a linear relationship between systolic and diastolic blood pressure and the risk of dying of coronary heart disease and stroke for each decade of age starting from 115 over 75 as you can see here it's linear from 115 over 75 now as you know, uh, these are the, the, the 2017 American Heart Association guidelines with uh, defining normal blood pressure less than 120 over 80, elevated blood pressure between 120, uh, between 120 and 130 and less than 80 for diastolic. Stage one hypertension, 130 uh, between 130 and 140 or 80 to 89 and stage two uh, hypertension higher than 140 or 90 for diastolic. Now, the results of this paper that is a summary, uh, is a meta analysis, as I said, of 48 clinical trials uh, comprising 350,000 patients uh, with and without cardiovascular disease stratified by different degree of systolic blood pressure at study entry shows that over four years of follow-up, a five millimeter mercury reduction in systolic blood pressure was associated with a relative risk reduction of cardiovascular events of 10%. So basically going from 140 of systolic blood pressure to 135 causes a 10% reduction in risk. But if you go from 140 to 120, you have a 40% reduction in risk of a cardiovascular event, and this is divided by uh, disease, stroke, heart failure, ischemic heart disease, death from cardiovascular disease, 13, 13, 8, and 5% for rich reduction of 5 millimeter mercury of systolic blood pressure. The other important point of this study is that the relative risk reduction was proportional to the intensity of blood pressure lowering. And so, the, as you can see in red, the higher the reduction in systolic blood pressure, the greater the reduction in cardiovascular events and neither the presence of cardiovascular disease or the level of blood pressure at study entry modify the effect of treatment. So in summary, the author suggests that, you know, the uh, current attitude of clinicians to, 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 to that confines antihypertensive treatment to people with high uh, than average blood pressure values that have stage one hypertension or more basically uh, shouldn't be uh, continued. And they propose that, you know, basically rather than blood pressure medication should be viewed as an effective tool for preventing cardiovascular disease when individual cardiovascular disease is elevated. So recommendation that specify a minimum blood pressure threshold for initi initiation or intensification of treatment or a throw level for blood pressure reduction are not substantiated by this study because you know, there is a continuum. Now that's fine, but you know, I would like to remind you that there are other tools apart from antihypertensive medication like diuretics, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and calcium antagonists, and uh, inhibitors of the angiotensin receptor uh, that have powerful antihypertensive effect. Uh, one of those is controlling of body weight with calorie restriction with optimal nutrition with a diet rich in uh, high fiber, high potassium, magnesium food. Uh, for example, in this cross-sectional study, people have been following color restriction with this type of high quality uh, diet, you know, even in their late 70 blood pressure was 100 over 60, and instead of people who were age and sex match were lean because they were runners by eating a typical American diet, they didn't have the same uh, outstanding results in terms of uh, lowering blood pressure. 
and even in calorie phase two, a randomized clinical trial of individual, healthy individual between 20 and 50 years old, you know, with a BMI between 22 and 28, that at baseline were super healthy, had a blood pressure of 111 and 71, a modest 13% reduction in caloric intake with 8% with, with eight kilos reduction in body weight, had a significant reduction in systolic and diastolic blood pressure. But not only that, not only the blood pressure was improved, but also LDL cholesterol was reduced, uh, HDL cholesterol increased, uh, there was reduction in CDRT protein, TNF alpha, oxidative stress, and there was a significant improvement in insulin sensitivity, less insulin secretion. And why that's important is important because I don't know if you are aware that uh, as you gain weight from 18 years and you, you gain weight, normally you don't, unless you are a bodybuilder, you don't gain muscle mass, you gain abdominal fat, especially uh, abdo abdominal fat. Uh, that, and you can see that, you know, because, you know, you have to increase the size of your pants, you, know, you have an increase in, in, in waist circumference. And these increase in, in visceral fat and ectopic liver fat and other fat in, 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 in ectopic organs is causing insulin resistance. And when you have insulin resistance, you have hyperinsulinemia, compensatory hyperinsulinemia that is basically linear as you, as you gain weight, body weight well before you start to have an increase in glucose in your blood. This chronic activation, so this hyperinsulinemia is chronically activating the insulin uh, IGF-1 receptor, uh, especially not only during the fasting, you know, the fasting mode, but also but most, most importantly, when you eat and you have an increase in glucose and more release in insulin, basically this is causing an inhibition of FOXO translocation and therefore you, you inhibit DNA repair, you inhibit uh, uh, antioxidant uh, uh, enzymes, you inhibit autophagy, you, you, you increase uh, uh, cell proliferation and inhibit apoptosis. Why I'm telling that, you know, because, sorry, because, you know, this accumulation of damage driven by this activation of insulin IGF-1 path inhibition of FOX and activation of mTOR is causing oxidative stress, DNA damage, cell senescence, and inflammation. Inflammation Chronic inflammation is triggering fibrosis and fibrosis results, among many other things, in arterial stiffness. Your blood vessels, your artery becomes stiffer. And when they are stiffer, you have, a, uh, you have mu much higher blood pressure. So that's a, that, this is an important point that you know, maybe you, you didn't consider. You know, when you are, normally when people measure blood pressure, they measure blood pressure at rest. But when you talk, if you are angry, if you are shouting, if you are drinking, if you are walking, if you are exercising, your blood pressure goes up well above the value that you have at resting. Uh, at, at resting. So, as you can see in this study published in Hypertension, if someone has a resting blood pressure of 110, as they start to exercise, blood pressure goes up and peaks around 180. Why? Because you, when you exercise, you need more blood to, to feed oxygen and nutrients to your muscles. And therefore you have to have an increase in heart rate and blood pressure to deliver this blood. So that's physiological. You need to have this response. But again, you know, if you start from 110 at resting, you go to 180. But if you start one from 140 at rest, you go to 220, 230. This very high blood pressure, very dangerous, especially if you have stiff blood vessel in your brain. Because what we know is that people who have exaggerated blood pressure in response to exercise, they have a much higher risk, a 40% higher risk of having a stroke. So basically, as you get older, your blood pressure, your blood vessel becomes stiffer because of these damaging effects of inflammation, hyperinsulinemia, activation of the insulin IGF-1 mTOR pathway, cell senescence. And these blood vessels that are stiffer, they are more prone to pop, to break when there is this spike of blood pressure because people, they get angry, they exercise, and they, are, they have this chronic anxiety, this is increasing blood pressure. And you have these major spikes, your blood pressure goes to 230, 
to 40 during exercise, during stress, and the blood pressure, the, the blood vessels that are stiff in your brain, they pop. And you start to accumulate microinfarction, especially in the white matter that accumulate over time without, you know, because if you have a, an infarction in your, in your gray matter, then you have a stroke. But if you have small microinfarction in the white matter, that is the, the part of the brain that connects, there are fibers that are connecting the different parts of the brains, you don't have symptoms until you have you reach a critical mass of microinfarction that are causing then, you know, dementia, vascular dementia. And we know that, you know, blood pressure, systolic blood pressure is a major risk factor for uh, vascular dementia. And we know that controlling body weight, calorie restriction with exercise, but most importantly with diet, you know, restricting calories, especially by increasing uh, high fiber and potassium and magnesium rich food like vegetables, legumes, uh, have a powerful inverse relationship, you know, at two, two, two plus with, 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 uh, with, uh, with uh, blood pressure. Instead of high sodium, high salt intake, you know, all this extra salt that people are eating by eating all these snacky, salt, salty snake, snack, snack foods and you know, all this canned food rich in salt. You know, please control when you buy something, look at if there is salt added, you know, because this accumulates over time and is an important factor for increasing blood pressure and stiffness. And we know omega-3 fatty acids, so fish, fatty fish is important, has an inverse relationship with blood pressure, fiber, and, um, and sort of, uh, and vegetable protein as well. Instead of animal protein, it's a, it's a mixed result, okay? And so again, healthy diet, I'm gonna talk about it later in more detail in other lecture. Exercise, mindfulness, and some uh, breathing technique, slow breathing and some uh, kind of uh, special pressure uh, technique has been shown in clinical trials, in preliminary clinical trials to lower blood pressure quite dramatically. So that's everything for today. Uh, thank you for watching as always. I'll see you next time.